Hello there, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this chatty get ready with me. We're gonna be talking about all kinds of topics, everything from a little mini vacation for me, taking a little time off to some scams and the current things happening with me personally, my channel, you know, just some things you need to be aware of. And then onto fun subjects like my beauty room closet DIY project that's currently underway. And that project is actually what prompted me to pull out the products that I'm going to use in today's video because I was going through things, trying to edit, trying to donate, get rid of old stuff. And I found a lot of products either that I haven't used in a while or that maybe I've actually never even shown here. They might not be super old, but they're ones that you all haven't seen me use yet. So I thought it'd be fun to put together a look with these products. And at the same time, we'll just chat about life and what's going on. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and now let's get started. Okay, for eye primer, I am going to the Smashbox. This is the Photo Finish Intensify 24 Hour Shadow. I used this kind of right after I first got it and it was really hard to squeeze out of the tube. So I honestly was not too sure I was gonna end up loving this, but actually it's become easier to get out of the tube. And I do feel like this helps my shadows stay in place. So I don't know why Smashbox decided they needed to redo a great product that they already had, but they have done it. And if you were hesitant because of the tube issue, it's resolved itself. Now I definitely need something on my lips and I have not used this in a while. This is the Laneige Lip Treatment. It smells like grapefruit, one of my favorite scents. It's an uplifting scent, has a little spatula. I mean, I've used quite a lot of it, but you know, you just start reaching for other things and forget about things in your drawer. Okay, so let's see here. Let's start with eyeshadow. I have two palettes that I'm gonna dip into and I'll explain why. The first one though is one that several of you messaged me and said, hey, did you see ColourPop's Not A Box Of Chocolates palette? And I immediately ordered it because, you know, I mean, I've gotta try the palette that's not a box of chocolates, right? And I did actually order the full kit that also came with the lipsticks. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use those today or not, but I'll show those to you. So here's what the palette looks like. And you can tell I have hardly used this. I've used it probably a handful of times. So I'm gonna dip into it today. I do have some thoughts. The color palette, I would say I'm glad that they said it's not a box of chocolates because there's a few things missing. And because of that, I'm going to dip into this little palette that I got in a boxy charm box. I think it came maybe November. And this is by Dominique Cosmetics. And I love the tones in here. Now, this is an all out glitter. Haven't worn that, but I've used the others. This is the shade that's missing from the box of chocolates palettes. So that is the main one I'm going to use from here. But let's go back to our palette. And as I mentioned, a few things missing. This shade right here, I'm gonna use it, but it is borderline too dark for me for a brow bone highlight shade. But I'm gonna take my Sigma E50 and let's just, I'm gonna not go quite all the way up to the brow, just underneath kind of the top part of the crease. You can see it does have a little bit of some peachy tones, but it's smooth, it's pigmented, it's not overly powdery. It's going to give us something to blend the darker shades into. And then with what's left on the brush, I am going to lightly brush that up. And now I'm going to go into this Dominique palette and I'm just going to real lightly tap that brush in and just, I mean, this has glow in it, which is not usually what I use, but right under the arch of the brow, I feel like a little shimmer there <laughs> isn't too bad. Let's go to the palette. Now, yesterday I was kind of playing around with this palette again. It is very deep, very sultry, and very brown. <laughs> there is this one shade that kind of has, I mean, just a hint of some plum tones in it. But I think that's probably my biggest thing about this palette is I don't really feel like you need like all of these, I mean, the differences between some of the shades is so minimal. I would have loved to see just a couple other shades in here. Let's go into this shade on the bottom here. It's called That's Rich. This one just has a hint 
more of a kind of reddish plum undertone versus this one. This one's slightly cooler. I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 203 brush. It's gonna start off looking a little sultry, but don't worry. We'll make it daytime appropriate because I have lots of errands to run today, including grocery shopping. So I'm just going to press this over the lid. And that primer is pretty sticky, but I used this palette with a different primer yesterday and I was having kind of the same same issues. So I feel like when you're using a more dense brush, be prepared, you're gonna have to do a little extra blending to get the shadows to blend. But you can see it's laying down the pigment nicely. And I'm gonna bring it up just kind of to the crease there. And then right here in the corner, I'll pack in a little extra. Okay, and then I'm going to use, let's go in with the BK Beauty 201 brush. And I'm gonna tap into here and here. So into All Nougat and O-Chip. This is O-Chip. The names in here are really cute, so I do appreciate that. Okay, so I'm putting that all through the crease. And you can see that did help with the blend of that darker shadow a lot. So the darker shadows just, I feel like you're gonna need one of the lighter shadows to blend them out. Uh, it's something like a Natasha Denona, I feel like those darker shadows can blend out on their own, but these I think need a little help. Okay, let's take a 212. So this one is fluffy, but it has a little bit of a point on it. I just wanna control this dark shadow. I'm gonna go back into that first shade we put on the lid and just dip the tip of that brush in there. And now I'm gonna take this through the crease and then just lightly blend it up. So just kind of, sometimes with hooded eyes, you have to go back and forth between shades so that you can bring that color up high enough to be able to see it above the hood. Yeah, so I, I feel like that shadow takes a bit of work to blend, but these crease colors, these lighter ones, those seem to be pretty easy to blend. And I'm gonna just deepen up the outer corner just a touch more. I didn't do this yesterday and I felt like I needed a little extra depth there before we add our shimmer shade on the lid. You know, we gotta add some shimmer to this look, right? All right, we're gonna go in with a couple layers of shimmer. Why not, right? I'm gonna start off with the shade, which is right here. It's a beautiful shimmery bronze shade. And even though it's dark because it does have kind of a glow to it, I feel like it can have a little bit of light to a dark look. But of course we can't stop there. Now, what I was a little disappointed in in this palette is this one right here is just a little bit chunky and kind of yellow. Um, and then this shade is much smoother, but again, quite yellow. But we're going to go ahead and let's see, let's add a little bit of this on top here first. And I'll just kind of show you. I mean, it does help to kind of overall lighten up the look, but I don't know. I I feel like even though these are all kind of brown, bronzy tones in here, some of them don't, the colors are just a little off. <laughs> so what I did when I used this palette yesterday is I then went into this palette and this is to me the fix all for something like this is you can pull in a bright, bright, almost white shimmery shade. And you can use that from the inner corner and go over as far as you want to. I'm gonna take this part way over and then I'm actually going to bring in a little bit of this shade. So let me show you this shade. This shade is called Soul. It's so pretty. It's more of a taupey color and this is kind of 
something I wish was in the not a box of chocolates palette. And then I'll go back to this shimmery white shade. I know some of you think when you use multiple eyeshadows that it makes it hard, but actually I think by layering shadows like this with your finger, I mean, that's not hard, is it? Is it hard? Just putting on one, one shadow real quick and then layering on the next one. I'm gonna use my left hand here. Okay, and then I'll go back with just my little brush with no extra product and just lightly brush all of that over. We need some liner. So I'm gonna use the KBD Tattoo Liquid Liner in Mad Max Brown. And I'm gonna do a trick that I've been enjoying doing that gives a little bit of a lift, but it's not a full on winged liner. I've done this before, but I honestly kind of forget how magical this can be. So as I get to the center point of my lid, I'm going up and kind of almost straight, but I'm not going to extend past my crease. So on this eye, it's more hooded than the other. So I have to make this one a little thinner and I'm gonna stop a little bit sooner than on this other eye. Now, while this one is a little bit thicker, I have a whole video on this, but I have uneven eyes. And so this just kind of helps fool the eye into thinking that my eyes are a little more even than they really are. Okay, on the lower lash line, I pulled out this By Terry Ombre Black Star Liner. And this particular shade is Bronze Moon. It's so pretty. I had kind of forgotten about this one in my drawer, pulled it out a couple days ago, and I was like, oh, forgot. It's a really interesting, it's not really gold. It's not really taupe. It's not really brown, but really just adds a nice bit of kind of a little bit of shine down here and a little bit of shadow, but it's not overly dramatic. And these things do not budge. Oh my goodness. These are amazing. I would say these are probably the best shadow sticks on the market. They're expensive, but they really do work. Okay, and then I'm gonna take the Morphe M432 and just a little bit of the shade here on just the outer corner. And you're gonna notice there is a little bit of, kind of looks like it would be a gap here where that liner ends and then where, if I were to draw the lower lash line liner up, where that would connect. But our mascara is going to take care of that little gap there because there are some blonde lashes there, believe it or not. Okay, let's play with one that I did not play with yesterday. Let's go in with this one, which is PB Brittle. Hmm, peanut butter brittle, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, that's probably too much. I'm just going to tap my finger once. So I would like this to be more of like a topper. It is more of a loose texture. I don't actually think I've worn this color yet. This is a good time to try it out, right? So yeah, you can see this has more loose flecks of glitter, but I think it can kind of help balance out the cool and the warm tones we've got going on here. One final blend to the crease. All right, let's clean up under the eyes. We'll go back and add in our corner highlight, all of that after we're done with the rest of our face. I'm gonna use a little bit of almond oil just to clean up real quickly under the eyes. Then as we start the face makeup, I will tell you what all has been going on. Okay, as we move on to the face, I'm gonna tell you all what's been going on. All right, the foundation I'm gonna use is this L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Tinted Balm. I bought this kind of at the tail end of winter last year, and I have the shade 10 Light. And obviously it was too light to use through the summer. I also felt like it was a little too moisturizing for the summertime. So it's just been sitting, and I thought, oh my word, I haven't used that. So we're gonna use it again. My recollection is 
I really liked this. I'm gonna use a beauty blender. It is damp. I might go to a different one, but we'll see. But this reminds me of the It Cosmetics Confidence in the Compact. I loved that foundation. Now this doesn't have any sunscreen in it, but I feel like the texture, like it looks cracked, but it's, whoa, super balmy texture, really nice. So I'm just gonna apply this. I kind of want just a light, more sheer coverage today kind of healthy skin look. We'll see what we get. So as I'm applying this, so the first very important thing, let's just get the whole scans thing out of the way. First of all, I know some of you saw my post on the community tab here on YouTube about somebody again impersonating me on an app called Telegram. Just for future reference, I feel like everybody here on YouTube says this, None of us are on WhatsApp, none of us are on Telegram, so if you ever get messages telling you to contact me on there, just know it's a scam. And I really try to take care of those things, but it seems like they always pop up and appear when I'm tied up in a meeting for a couple of hours and all of a sudden I'll see all of these comments of them telling you, so it takes a little bit of time too for me to track all those people down and block them and do all kinds of things. So just want to put that out there. Save yourself headache and uh, know that I do try to stay on top of things like that. But along with that, I, for years I've been fighting these fake wig ads that are all over Pinterest and Facebook. And I feel like Facebook and, and Pinterest have been pretty cooperative. They'll take them down, but these companies will post an ad of my hair tutorials and they say it's me putting on a wig. Well, now the latest is, and apparently there's nothing I can do about this, but there are, there is one main really popular hair site, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and how they do is post posts on their page and they repost pictures of people like me. I'll just use myself as an example. I, I found four different posts with my pictures, videos, reels from Instagram that they pull over and they say, um, here's the straightener we love. And they put links to Amazon to some product, but they're putting my picture there or my reel, my hair tutorial. On one post, they link the enjoy molding paste and say, this is the product used in this video, and it's not. And then I've had some of you say, oh, I saw that you used this straightener. And I was like, what? And it's from this page. Um, Facebook told me today that basically I have no rights to <laughs> claim any of that content. They're not doing anything wrong. So I just want to say, if you ever see me in some ad or a post using a product or links to a product, Unless you see something on my Facebook page or in my video on my channel, it's probably not something that I endorse. So I just want to put that little warning out there. Okay, let's move on to some concealer. So I'm going to use, I think, the Clinique concealer. Let's start off. I'm going to use, oh, let's use a one. Might be a little light, but let's just do a couple little dots of this. Now on to more fun topics. Of vacation. I feel like this year in particular coming out of Christmas and uh, New Year's, it wasn't necessarily the holidays that were busy, but December was, there was just a lot that went on for me personally, for our church, for just in my life in general. And I just kind of got to January 1st and I was like, oh my word, I'm exhausted. And, you know, creatively, like with music and everything, um, I just, oh, I put so much into December and had so much going on that, yeah, January rolls around and I'm kind of out of gas. So I decided I already had plans to go visit my parents in Oklahoma. So I will be going there next week. Um, my husband's staying here. You know, we have dogs to take care of. That's a whole nother story, but, um, and he hates to fly. So 
I'm going to visit my folks. My mom, without going into detail, she really could use your prayers if you're a praying person. She has lots of serious health things going on. So um, all of us kids are trying to make trips back there and, you know, spend time with her. My dad, my dad's poor guy. He's got a lot on his plate. I feel like I need a little bit of some concealing. So that foundation, obviously it's very glowy. It is sheer coverage, but I used a damp sponge. Let's go in. This is a new sponge from Real Techniques and it says it's for full coverage and you're supposed to use it dry except for the first time you use it. So I'm going to go in and let's just see what this does. So uh, back to next week. So while I am in Oklahoma, usually if I take off time, I am trying to frantically film several videos ahead and make sure that I don't miss a beat here on YouTube, but you are not going to have new videos from me next week. But I'm sure there are lots of videos that you may not have watched. So hopefully you can have some entertainment while I am off. And when I get back to filming schedule, that brings us to my other exciting project, my closet renovation DIY project. Okay, before we get into that, let's just take a look. Um, I actually think that this sponge, because it's dry, it's not adding extra glow, but I do feel like it added a little extra coverage. What do you think? We are gonna powder and powder always helps as well, but I'm gonna add a little more here to this side. Okay, let's go back with just a little bit of concealer. I'm gonna use a slightly darker shade. This is WN04, I used WN01. And I'm just gonna add a little bit here because I didn't use color corrector today. I feel like sometimes I need to use just a little darker concealer just to help conceal that darkness. And I'm using the A506 brush from BK Beauty, Candy Hot and Blushy. Okay, I'm gonna let that set for a moment and go in with a product I haven't used in a while. This is the KBD. This is Mod, what is this called? It's Mod Contour or something like that. I'll put it down in the description box below along with everything else I'm using. But this is the shade Fair Cool. And this is my winter shade. I also have it in a darker shade. This is a great product. It just dries really fast. So you kind of need to work one section of the face at a time. And I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 107 brush, my favorite for cream contour. I've been loving my NARS bronzing cream, Laguna bronzing cream, but I thought I better give that one a break cause I am down to the bottom of that jar. So this one provides a really nice natural look as well. You just have to blend it right away. Oh, it's always so nice to add a little bit of life <laughs> and shape to the face. Ooh, look at that glow, my goodness. Okay, and then I'm going to add just a little shaping here. And what some of you have said, you could never wear a pixie cut because of a rounder face. Well, this is the secret. <laughs> I just, you know, shape my face with a little contour. That makes a big difference. <laughs> Add just a little bit more in the back part of right under my sideburns there. Like this is where you can add a little more depth and get away with it. And it actually makes the cheeks look more sunken. This product, it really does just blend in so nicely. Yeah, I feel like when I use a lighter, a lighter coverage foundation, my nose can tend to look just a little red because that's where I have my redness. I know a lot of us do. I'm going to do just a little bit of concealing here on the outer edge. I'm not going to put concealer on the end of my nose because that will make your nose actually look longer. That's not what I'm going for. I'm going to go in with this little sponge here. 
As far as powders go, I have a lot of powders I haven't used because they are lighter and they have a little bit of coverage. I have the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear. I know a lot of people love to use this as a setting powder to add a little extra coverage. Oh, why not? Let's just give it a try. But I'm going to go in first with a fluffier brush. So this one isn't as dense as uh, the powder brush I usually use. This is the Sigma All Over Powder F24. And the shade I have in this Fresh Wear Foundation is 120. So ooh, I'm always a little hesitant to do this because it has coverage. But I'm just going to go lightly Let's start here on the perimeter of the face. Make sure it's not making things look cakey. You would think that L'Oreal's products would mix well together, right? And then I'm going to tap here, center of the face. Actually, that's looking really nice. I think the key so far is just a very light amount. So it is adding just a little extra coverage, but I don't mind that. Under the eyes, boy, it's been a long time and this could be risky, but I'm going to use the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Light Plus. And I know a lot of people with mature skin love to use this to set their concealer. Ooh, a little nervous, but let's just go for it. We'll just see how it goes. I'm going to, again, go in with a light amount. I'm going to start on the outer corner. And then with what's left on the inner part, I just need a little bit of mattification under there. Let's go to blush next. And while I apply blush, we'll talk about a fun closet renovation project. I'm gonna use the Patrick Ta. This is She's Blushing. This is the double take where it has the powder and then the cream. And he recommends starting with the powder and topping with the cream. If you've never seen this before, you will think I've lost my mind, but it actually works. So I'm going to take this Sigma. This is the F10 powder blush brush. We're going to start here with the powder and then I'll apply the cream. So my closet here in my beauty room, I have never organized since we moved in. We've been in our house almost two years. I cannot believe it. And it's just basically been a piling ground for everything that has no home elsewhere. And all of my PR that I get in or just new products I'm trying, I don't have a good place to store and organize those things. I also have a few other craft projects like my sewing machine. I have scrapbooking supplies. So anyway, there are lots of things that I need to work into this closet, but I also have wanted to move my computer off of this beauty table where I've been working, move that to a different space. So I'm going to put that in the closet. At least that's my plan. So my dear friend Debbie is coming over to help me at least do as much as we can in one day. She's a busy mom. So I need to, I'm going to paint the inside kind of like a blush pink color. It's going to be kind of like the darkest pink color in that picture there. That's just going to be on the inside of the closet. I have some wallpaper possibilities. I don't know, but I will be sure to, I am filming it. So you will all be seeing that soon, but I'm excited. I love an organized space. Nothing stresses me out more than everything in disarray. You can't find anything. And I just feel like things get lost in the shuffle. So stay tuned. That will be coming soon. All right. We are done. We are powdered. Oh, I can already tell. I don't think that powder is going to work under my eyes. So let's pull out one of my tried and trues. I'm going to use the Makeup Forever HD Ultra HD Micro Finishing Powder. I love this stuff. I'm just going to tap a little bit of this here. Not only is this great at setting the makeup, but it does provide amazing blurring effect. And so then I'm going to use my damp beauty sponge, the other side from where my foundation is. And now I'm going to use just a little bit of this in the areas where I have more texture pores. Just a little bit there. 
For brows, I pulled out, wow, something from the bottom of my drawer that I absolutely used to love. This is the MAC Shape and Shade Brow Tint, and I have the shade Fling. I don't like the powder side, but this is one of those kind of marker pens, and I really love this, but I do have to put on my makeup readers in order to do this type of a brow. I showed these in a recent video and several of you were asking. Check the description box below, but these are from Beachy Eyewear. I do have a discount code, they're inexpensive, and just order them in your reader prescription. All right, let's just apply, I gotta get super close here. I, when I do a brow pen, I do feel like I can't do this if I'm in a hurry, so. Some people can, I have to take my time, but I just like to first go underneath and kind of create just a nice little line. And then just with really light strokes and somewhat separated, go through the brow here and create kind of hair-like strokes in the areas where you need a little extra fill in. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this Essence Make Me Brow Eyebrow Gel. And this is Blondie Brows. And this has a little bit of some fibers in there, but I feel like it kind of helps slightly lighten the brows if you've gotten a little carried away, but it also adds a little bit of fullness with the brows, there we go. Now we just gotta flip this over, go to the other side. I'm gonna curl my lashes with this Refer Eyelash Curler. I'm gonna use this combination. So the Dior Maximizer 3D Primer and then the Soshi Mascara. I've shown this before and I've actually continued to like this mascara a lot. It is refillable. I think I saw, oh yeah, there we go. Um, you just unscrew the bottom, I guess, and order refills, so kind of cool. And then I'm gonna use the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions on the lower lashes. So there's one coat of the Soshi Mascara over the primer. And I do feel like this kind of thickened up a little bit as it sat in my drawer but it is a nice mascara. It doesn't compare to the It Cosmetics Superhero in my opinion, but if you're somebody who doesn't like a real clumpy volumizing mascara, this is a nice one. And I do feel like it builds nicely on itself as well. It wouldn't be mascara application. If you didn't get mascara somewhere, it's not meant to be, right? <laughs> Dear. While I'm waiting for those mascara blobs to dry, let's go in with inner corner highlight. I'm gonna use this one from the Dominique eyeshadow palette. It's called Love and Light. And just gonna go back and add a nice little pop there on the inner corner and then blend it in again. All right, let's wipe off that lip balm and you can see it's still very much present so it doesn't just disappear. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, just around the edge of the lips. If you haven't seen me do this, it just helps even out my lip lines and it helps prevent my lip liner or lipstick or gloss from bleeding past the lip line. All right, for our lips today, um, I thought I would show you a couple of the shades of the ColourPop chocolate collection. This is their Luxe lipstick and I felt like I was a little, okay, I was a lot disappointed in the color range of not only the lipsticks but the glosses. I feel like they're all just, they're so close to each other and they're all just very, very brown. So this one obviously being the darkest of the shade, I mean, they're colors that, I don't know. Yes, they're neutral, but they're just not my favorite. So this one, I think this is the one I've actually worn before. It's quite warm. And then this other shade, this one's the lighter. I guess I just, I don't know what I was thinking, but 
They do all look like chocolate, but they're just not my favorite all on their own. I always end up adding some kind of shimmery gloss or something. The lip glosses, let's see, they are the Fresh Kiss Lip Lacquers and kind of same story. They're all just cream formula. I feel like if they would have added shimmer, that would have helped make these a little more wearable, but it's just kind of like, I don't know, kind of like chocolate gloss on the lips, right? Deep skin tones even. I feel like just a little bit of shimmer. I'm not going to swatch this because I'm actually planning to donate these to friends. But <laughs> anyway, I think for today, okay, I had to go get the gloss I want to use today. But while I did, I found the third color of the lip lacquer. This is the one I've actually worn. What I do love is it does taste sweet, kind of like chocolate. And it smells like chocolate. So that's that color. So again, it's, you know, it's, it's not, it's a fun concept, but I just feel like really creamy brown is just a hard color for most of us to pull off. So that's just my take on those. All right, for lip liner, I'm going to use one that is a favorite currently. This is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Pencil in Nighthawk. For lipstick, something I have not used in a while is this Revlon Colorstay Matte Light Crayon. And this particular shade, I'll have to look it up and put it down below. It's just a really nice matte peachy nude. I forgot how good these smell, like a nice soft vanilla. And then over that, I'm going to add one of my all-time favorite glosses. This is the Dose of Colors gloss in the shade Jazzy. They have repackaged these. This is the old packaging. It's so pretty. Okay, watch. It just has the most beautiful shimmer, but it's not gritty. It smells like cake, basically, but I just, I love it. It is a little sticky, but just enough to where it stays on your lips for a good amount of time. All right, I fixed my hair, little second hair day magic. And now here is our finished makeup look. Overall, I do love how everything looks kind of all combined together. The foundation, my skin does look a little more textury than normal and a little lighter coverage because it's a little dewier foundation than I typically wear and that my combo skin usually is used to. But if you're somebody who has really dry skin and you like just a sheer coverage, you might really enjoy this. As far as the eyeshadow palettes go, of course I love the concept. The you know, not a box of chocolates, that whole thing. I think it's cute. And overall, the quality of these shadows is pretty nice. I would say, you know, there's just a couple that are a little bit kind of flaky and not quite as pigmented. But as far as the color scheme goes, it's really dark and very brown. So if that speaks to you and the kind of things that you gravitate towards, then you might really enjoy this. I just, wish that there was a little more variety in here, a few lighter options and maybe some peachier tones, some other things to work with all of this brown. You know what I'm saying? As far as the Dominique palette, I don't know if this was a boxy charm exclusive or if it's sold on its own. I'll link it down below if it is, but I really, I think this is a beautiful palette. Aside from the glitter, yeah, this is this is not one that I plan to be, you know, really digging into that chunky glitter, but everything else in there, I do really like that. And I love the lip combination, the cheek color, that Patrick Ta blush. Every time I use one of these, I think, oh yes, this is why I love it. So I do love that. The KVD contour, I think that looks really nice and natural. The brows, the mascara. So overall, it was just fun for me to pull out some of these products I haven't used in a while or haven't used very much and pull together this look here. As always, check the description box below for links to everything 
everything I use today. I will also leave some links for some of my recent videos that you may have missed so that you have some entertainment next week while I take a week off. Thank you as always so much for your kind support of my channel by you watching my videos, liking them, commenting. It really does help my channel. So I hope you'll continue to watch even though I'm taking a week off and I will be back with my beauty room closet DIY project along with some other fun videos in February. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.